Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about RetroArch in a container. Now this is a little bit different than other implementations that do something similar. Now this one follows the same pattern that I used for my DOS box implementation. In both of these, what I wanted to do was create an implementation of the platform and then have it render everything in the container and then stream the results back to a browser. So the browser becomes the client and you can play the game in the browser, but it's going to be doing it over a network by streaming the results back from a server that's running in a Docker container. So let's go through the implementation of this by looking at the stack, and then I'll show you some of the code that's in the Docker file. It's a little bit different from my original one that's for DOSBox, and then I will demo the implementation by playing a game inside of my container. So here is the architecture for this. We're going to be looking at a browser client with a container with all the software and of course RetroArch at the bottom. Now there's two stacks in this, one for audio and one for video. On the video side, we have Virtual GL, which is basically an implementation of OpenGL, but it allows us to have OpenGL without a graphics card present. So I can run OpenGL applications and render everything in software and then output that in a way that is headless or that doesn't have hardware dependencies. So with Virtual GL, I can write the output from Virtual GL to something like VNC. In this case, Turbo VNC, which is an implementation of VNC that works with Virtual GL. Now, once everything's in the VNC protocol, I can't natively consume that with the browser, so I need a way to expose it to the browser, and that's where WebSocketify comes in. It basically takes a TCP stream and wraps it in the WebSockets protocol and then exposes it to a browser. But to broker that, I need a web server, and that's where NoVNC comes in. NoVNC uh, serves up the static content to the browser, as well as brokers the connection between WebSoxify and the browser as well. Now on the audio side, I have a similar implementation where I have Pulse Audio. It's kind of like Virtual GL in that I can have sound output without needing a sound card. So Pulse Audio will allow for sound output, and then it's something can consume that, like GStreamer. GStreamer is typically used in video streaming, but it also works for audio streaming as well. But it's a TCP stream, so again, I'm gonna wrap WebSoxify around that, and then I don't need anything to basically expose this because I already have a client that's exposing the client to the browser with no VNC. But to get both of these unified, I need a proxy, and that's where Nginx comes in. Now, Nginx basically is going to do a reverse proxy to both of these stacks, and based on the URL-based routing, it'll either go to the audio stack for audio or to the video stack for video or the, for the static content. And with everything in play, I should be able to connect a browser over a single port and get both my audio and my video content streaming up from RetroArch through their various stacks back to my browser. So here's the Docker file for this. If you're interested, it's the one mule slash retroarch dash Docker. And it's based on Ubuntu.22.04. It's got a couple of variables that are set up here. Most of these are just for the installation to go smoothly. So it's non-interactive install. So you can run this using a Docker build command. And uh, this is setting some parameter settings for some of the uh, time zone information that some of these packages require. So it's basically using a data output for TZ data to basically enable a fully automated installation. And uh, here is the PPA uh, for installing RetroArch. And once that's installed, you can configure everything uh, using some of the pre-built config files in the, in the repository. And this just basically copies up files for audio and Nginx. This right here injects the code for the audio. It's basically modifying no VNC to have the audio components available. And from there, it installs OpenGL or via virtual GL and then Turbo VNC. It's using some different devs that are available on SourceForge. Uh, there's no packages for these, so you have to do the old fashioned way and use um, the dev package manager just to install these. Um, once that's installed, uh, we create a directory for our ROMs, that's for your games. And then it copies uh, a RetroArch config. So that's to basically to modify the key mappings. For some reason, the arrow keys don't work uh, in this implementation. And I tried to get it to work, but I couldn't. So I remapped them to the numpad. And so this basically maps all of the uh, arrow keys to the numpad instead of the, to the arrow keys themselves. And then this, of course, copies up the supervisor D configuration that starts all of the various components that we just walked through, such as WebSoxify, Pulse, a RetroArch, VNC, and so on uh, to run. Uh, inside of this container. And once you build this and you run it, then you have the ability to play games. And I'm gonna walk you through how to uh, basically run this uh, so that you can see how it works uh, whenever you go to 
create the container and then through some of the setup process once the container is created. So getting this is pretty easy. You'll need to have a Linux context uh, set up with Docker installed. So uh, there are definitely a thousand ways to do that. So you can easily Google that or you probably already know how if you're interested in doing this anyway. I'm gonna get the repo by getting this URL here. And you can get a get clone on this, um, clone like this, and then just paste in the URL. But I already have it because I pulled the code already. And this is what it looks like in a local context. Now to build this, you can uh, use Docker build. Docker build is pretty straightforward. Just do Docker build dash T and then give it a name, retro arch like that, and then build the Docker file, which is in this folder right here. And mine builds quickly if I'm, because I'm using cache, but if you built this from scratch, it would probably take anywhere from two to five minutes, depending on your internet connection, the speed of your computer and a lot of other factors. Once it's built, you have this locally. Now you can also pull it if you want to use Docker pool. So you can do Docker uh, pool and you can do blaze slash retro arch and that'll pull it from Docker hub, which I've already built um, already. And you can just download that. And I've already got the latest because I pushed this already. Once it's downloaded or built, which regardless of which one you're using, you can use Docker run to run the image. So I'm going to use Docker run, but I'm going to mount a volume. But to, before I do that, let me get back to the root folder here because this has got a, a game that I'm going to use for my demo. So let's use Docker run here. I'm going to do a dash V to mount a volume into this. So the local folder, and then I'm going to mount that to slash ROMs uh, in the container. And then I'm going to tell it what port I'm going to use. So I'm going to do dash P to publish a port. And then I'm going to do 80 to port 80 in the container. And then I'm going to tell it what container image to use. So I'm going to use blaze slash retro arch, or if you built it, whatever the name of the image that you're going to be using, a retro arch like that, and then run it. And that will look something like this, and you will see it do some output where it's spawning some processes, and that's just supervisor creating all of these different processes. You might see an exited VNC. Uh, that's perfectly normal. Uh, but once you have that, let's open up uh, Google Chrome here. And uh, let's get a new browser window and then go to the IP of the address of the particular container that I'm running that I exposed on port 80. Uh, the IP address depends on your Docker environment. I have a no mine, so I'm gonna do HTTP. There's no HTTPS on this build. Um, so I'm going to point it to 10.0.1.92, which is my Linux box. And you should see some output like this. I'm gonna click on vnc.html and then click connect. And then I'm gonna put in the default password. This was set in the Docker file, so it's password one by default. And then you should see something that looks like this, which is a pretty rough looking menu for RetroArch. Now, if you hit F11 twice, you should be able to get the X cursor. So to clean this up some, we need to update it. So I'm gonna click on online updater, and I'm gonna click on update assets, and that's gonna download the icon packs and fonts to make this look a little better. And uh, once that's done, uh, it will restart RetroArch with some cleaner looking fonts and the icons as well. And then I'm gonna do update core info files. And that's basically going to download some links that allow me to know where to download cores from, which is important because this is where I can install the cores for whatever platform I'm gonna use. And so I'm scrolling through these and you can see that I flew by DOSBox. I'm looking at Nintendo right now. Um, I want SNES, I want the SNES 9X uh, right here. I'm gonna install this particular one. So once you have the core installed, you might want to use a controller. If you don't have a controller, you can skip this part. I'll link a pair that I'm using in the video description down below, which is this SNES clone controller. These just plug into USB on my computer. And once you have the controller plugged in, you'll need an app to run that. Now, the app to use is called Anti-Micro X, and this is the GitHub repo for it. You can download this. I'm using this portable Windows version, so you can download uh, the portable Windows version, but you can get the dev for um, Ubuntu or for Debian-based distros, or you can use an app image, which will work for other uh, Linux distros. Once you download that, you can extract it or hire or install it using whatever uh, installer you use, and then you can launch the app. I'm gonna launch the executable, which looks like this. So once the executable is loaded, you can't really tell on this particular um, view right here because it doesn't show up very well, but you can tell what button you wanna map simply by pressing the controller button. And in this case, I'm pressing the left button on the D-pad on the controller and it's highlighting the left button right here. So that's what I'm gonna map. I'm gonna map this left button right here. So I'm going to map that to 
the numpad for the arrow keys for some reason didn't work. So I remapped them to use left for four, eight for up, six for right and two for down. Now this particular controller got the Y and X buttons backwards on the mapping. You can change that, but I just use them as is. Um, and it also got the B and A button backwards. So if I press B on the controller, it actually highlights the A button. And if I press A on the controller, it actually highlights the B button. But that confusion aside, what you wanna make sure is that the keyboard buttons are mapped to the appropriate buttons on your controller. So in my case, I am holding down the B button and I wanna make sure that's mapped to the Z on my keyboard, even though it's mapping, it's showing A as the actual button, but I'm using the B button on the controller and that corresponds to Z on the keyboard. So I'm going to select Z for that button. I'm pressing the A button on the controller. So I'm gonna map that to the X button on the keyboard. Uh, I'm pressing the Y button on the, the controller. So that maps to the A on the keyboard. And then I'm pressing the X button on the controller and that maps to the S button. And then this has a left shoulder which maps to Q and a right shoulder that maps to W. Uh, your controller may differ. So you have to figure out which buttons that you're using. and uh, the actual mappings may differ too, but the ones that I just mentioned are the ones that you want to make sure that you're mapping to. But once you once you have it uh, mapped, everything looks good. You can save the profile and use it again when you uh, play the game. And I'm gonna go to load content, and I'm gonna go to the roof, and I'm gonna go down to ROMs, and I should see um, Mario Kart. There it is. That's a Mario Kart ROM that I have on my Linux host for this particular uh, box here and you'll have to get your particular ROMs from wherever you get your ROMs from. And I'm gonna start that, and you should see it start up this particular ROM right here. And this uh, has sound, and now you can see that it's streaming rather smoothly back to my browser here using this stack. So to play the game, I'm gonna start the 50cc class on Super Mario Kart. And I mapped everything on this by default to use the numpad because for some reason the arrow keys didn't work. If you have a solution for that, I would love to know. Please drop me a comment in the comment section down below or update the RetroArch config and you know give me a pull request and I'll gladly incorporate whatever changes I need to to make the arrow keys work in RetroArch. I know they work because um, I've used them in other applications in a similar fashion using this particular approach uh, using RetroArch or using DOSBox rather uh, through type DNC, but for some reason it doesn't work with RetroArch because I think it's something with the input driver. I have no idea why it doesn't work. It won't even detect that. So um, I would love to have a solution to that. But in any case, you can see that this is actually working fairly well and the game is very playable and there's really no cheering or tearing or any kind of thing or any kind of like artifacts. The sound is nice and crisp. The animation is clear, it's got a high FPS. I mean, everything about this is just a really good experience uh, for playing games on that are on the retro gaming platform in the context of a browser. So if you like this content, please consider subscribing to my channel, share this with your friends, drop me a comment in the comment section down below, like the video, do all that stuff, and I'll be glad to uh, answer any comments or questions you may have or help you out in any way, way that you might. If you have any questions, please do let me know. I'll be glad to uh, work with you on this. And, and again, I like to play with this kind of stuff. So if you have some uh, more requests that you want to send me, please do that as well. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.